All right, guys, this is extremely useful. Uh, if you're writing database queries and you've got uh, database queries that need to be fast and they've got to do a lot of math, a lot of times in large database applications when you have a lot of reporting and things like that, you need to do a lot of aggregate math and analysis on the data. And a lot of times what people end up doing is they end up taking that and making it in code, but that's uh, sometimes a lot worse and harder to do uh, in terms of portability than keeping it within the database. Um, so one of the things that we do is uh, we're going to calculate daily sales. And this is an example of the final result that we're kind of after here. Uh, the final result will, uh, the reason I have this 10 times is because in the normal execution of this code, which I don't have fully here, we need to do math on the daily sales. The daily sales is a figure, sales per day. So we have to do math on that. Maybe it's volume times sales per day. Maybe it's uh, uh, you figure out the profit. Maybe it's figure out the revenue. No matter how you look at it, you have to call this function 10 different times in the execution of this. You don't have to do it, obviously doing it 10 of the times in a row, like it doesn't make any sense. But sometimes you'll have to do like, you know, times 24 for 24 hours, or, you know, let's say times 52 for 52 weeks, or something like that, right? You might have to do math on these against other functions, like some other function, right? First of all, if you don't know what a MySQL function is, uh, I should make a separate video on that, but a MySQL function is just a stored function that does something. It allows you to call a function and pass it a value and get a result back. Well, our first initial problem is that here is our here's our function daily sales I'm not gonna dive into this but one thing it does is it my SQL functions don't have the concept of an array to calculate daily sales we need that so we use a temporary table okay and the temporary table only has an ID that has an auto increment and it's got a count and it counts the number of sales per day uh, that's a temporary table and we do an it we do a select from another table and fill that data I call it temp daily fail because this is the one that is slow versus a good one that is fast, and I'll show you in a second. Um, but basically what this does is every time you call this function, it will create a temporary table, it will delete all the entries in that table, and then it will insert new data, and then calculate a bunch of stuff. Okay, pretty simple. If we run that, so daily sales fail, we're gonna run that on, um, let's say, and product.skew, or actually let's do and skew.skew equals, uh, like equals test 001. I don't even know if it's going to give us a result or not, but so it's running the query and I'm going to leave the video here to show you that it's slow because I'm trying to hone down the point that it's slow. Again, this is uh, for picking. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I put that in the group by and I shouldn't have. Let's put it here. It shouldn't be that slow at this point. Okay, so I've added a, a, a clause where it's just this one skew, right? Just picking this one skew. If I run that, it's instantaneous 60 milliseconds, okay? But that, I have 300 some skews, not just one. So let's do instead a limit one instead of that, right? So we'll do a limit one instead of picking it. I'll just pick the first one, whatever it comes out to be. And I'll run that, and that comes to 109 milliseconds. Good. But what if I get rid of the limit and I want all of them? So I'll run that. Now it's running this function on 300 and some SKUs, or 500 and some SKUs, I don't know what the database is, could be, uh, it could be 1,000 SKUs, 10,000 SKUs, whatever this test database has. So still running, again, this is on all of our, all the SKUs in this database here. It takes about 16 seconds, 20 seconds, okay. So this is the daily sales for all these SKUs, there's 430 in the database here, for this example, and it took 20 seconds to run. Now, that's terrible. You can't use that. So what do we do? We're going to do two things to speed this up. We're going to do one thing to fix the problem that this causes, to call it once, and then we're going to solve a different problem that lets us call it 20 times, or 10 times, whatever. So this problem is that we are creating a temporary table, and every single time we're, well, well, actually, we already solved that problem. We aren't creating it every time we're doing uh, create table if not exists. So that was the, so this is already optimized once. The first optimization is not to create and drop a table every time. It is to create a table if it doesn't exist, and then instead of doing truncate, which you can't do, you're going to use delete, which will clear out the, uh, the data in it, right? So the first optimization that I've already done is create it if not exists and delete. 
So doing a create and a truncate only if it doesn't exist instead of creating it new every time. That's the first thing. The second thing that we're going to do is instead of creating a table like this, we're going to use a different type of engine in MySQL. A lot of times you don't think that you need to actually change the engine type, but in this case we are. So we're going to set engine equals, and this is called memory. You can actually can create a database table of the storage type memory that only holds itself in your RAM. Now you have to have RAM to support it, but you don't need much for this, and this is beautiful. Watch what happens. I will now rerun this this uh, call here. Now I'll go ahead and run this. So let's start by killing that temporary table since it already existed. So drop temporary table uh, temp. What did I call it? Temp temp daily fail. Let's first get rid of this because it's not it, it didn't actually change the storage type because it already existed so now that's gone now let's run it again now that it's gonna create the table now it's gonna create the table in memory should take about two seconds there we go 1.91 seconds so look at that all of a sudden our query that took 20 seconds before now only takes 1.91 seconds that's a huge increase for that table just by adding that it's incredible it's great so that's the first time but what happens if we call this and let's do let's uh, replace daily sales two with daily sales fail right so now we've got our our highly qu I'm quoting in the air now our highly optimized query now we're gonna run it ten times we know once takes two seconds what happens if we run it ten times let's find out boom again this is our highly now if you tried to do this before when it was 20 seconds, it would it just would have went forever. It just would have died. It wouldn't even have worked. So you couldn't even get to this stage before the optimization we just did. So at this point, there we go. 15 seconds. We're back we're back to 15 20 seconds again. All because we called this x number of times. So now how do we fix that? And here's where the beauty comes in. Here's the real function, daily sales 2. And what this does is it does something called memoization. I learned this yesterday. What it means is that you're caching the function parameters, right? So what we're doing here is I've got a table called fn cache that I'm not going to show you, but all it really is it's it's got a function name, an input parameter, an input parameter, and another input parameter. You can use as many as you want, and then it's got a result. And then finally it has a date range. It's got a date, okay? And what we're going to do is the first thing in our stored function is we're going to try to get our value Immediate, first thing, we're going to try and get our value. We're going to take our input parameter, which is a SKU, and we're going to look for it. We know the name of our function is daily sales2. So we're going to say select result from fn cache, where the function equals daily sales2, and our input1 is the SKU. The last thing we're going to do is I taught this timestamp diff in another video, but we're going to say within 30 seconds. It has to have been in here in the last 30 seconds. Why 30 seconds? That seems like a weird number. Well, it is kind of arbitrary, but by this whole thing executes within 30 seconds. So by the time it gets from this one to this one, it's still within that 30 seconds, which means that the value is still cached. The reason I'm only doing 30 seconds is because we really don't want to cache too much because we really need data to be kind of alive here. You could cache more than that if you wanted, but I'm only caching 30 seconds. Just enough time to get through the whole loop. That's really all it's doing. So we're basically going to try and get the result if it was within 30 seconds. If it's null, go ahead and do all of the work. Otherwise, it's just going to return. Which means, which means after this first time, this first time running, this is what does the work. The rest of these just return the exact same thing. That is memoization. So, here, let me show you what I mean by that. We're going to run, we're going to now run daily sales, where is it? We're going to run daily sales 2 now, which is the good one. We're going to run that once and it's going to take about two seconds to run because it has to do the work. I'm going to run it, now I'm going to run it again immediately after that and now it takes 492 milliseconds. It's within 30 seconds, that's why. If I wait 30 seconds, it's going to take long again, but it's still within that time. Every time I run it, it takes 400 and some seconds, 400 and some odd seconds. Again, again, this took 16 seconds before and it would have taken infinitely more time than that when we first started. After 30 seconds, which I'm trying to wait here so I can show you. After 30 seconds, it's going to take another two seconds. I'm just trying to wait 30 seconds. I should have changed the number. Have I talked for 30 seconds yet? Let's run it again. There we go. It's been 30 seconds since the first time. It took 2.19 seconds now. Run it again. It takes 500 milliseconds. So as you can see, now now let's just run this guy. We'll put 
or undo back. Now, as you can imagine, I can run this thing in in seconds flat now. Look at that. 1.79 seconds to run this 10 times and do all the math I wanted. It's amazing. We, we've taken this query, we've optimized the crap out of it, and now we can do complex math and reporting with a couple simple tricks.